Hi, everyone. I'm starting a minute early. Um, so we're going to give everybody a second to get here. Um, in the meantime, I will start my introductions. My name is Amber Benoit. Um, and I am the owner and seamstress, main seamstress of Sewing by Amber uh, here in Rochester, New York. Uh, we are a full service seamstress in many ways, um, meaning that we, I make uh, lots of different items for people. I have made um, memory items like quilts and pillows and things like that, stuffed animals. Um, I have recreated things for customers uh, like old stuffed animals using only photographs. Um, I specialize primarily in bags, uh, purses, backpacks, all of those fun things. Um, and obviously, I teach sewing lessons as well. Uh, and you may have, if you are following us, if you are in our VIP group, you probably have also seen Sindel. Um, she also works with us. She's another seamstress um, who does a lot of the work that we do here um, with bags and purses and all that fun stuff. But today we are focusing on the sewing lesson aspect um, because I am a sewing teacher. I go into people's uh, homes here in Rochester uh, and teach them one-on-one -on -one personal uh, sewing lessons. I myself have been sewing practically my whole life. I'm not going to reveal my age, but I have been, uh, had a needle in my hands at five years old because my grandmother was a seamstress and uh, she taught me from a very early age, uh, very easily the way that she did it through projects. The, and it has made me a firm believer that the best way, the easiest way for you to learn to sew is to make projects. And I'm sorry, we're a little bouncy is to make projects of your own along with somebody else who is a seasoned sewer who can help you along the way. Uh, and that is the reason that we have our project packs. So today we are going to assemble um, one of our project packs that was part of our summer camp kit. So this is something we started last year. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the summer camp kit is a kit that comes uh, in usually July and it includes at least a few projects. Um, and gives you instructions and pre-cut materials and everything you need to do. And then you get access to things like this, this live lesson, uh, as well as our lesson library that teaches you all about um, doing sewing with using a sewing machine. Uh, so we have the chat open. So as we go through this project, if you guys have questions uh, or you want me to touch on something that I haven't touched on or slow something down, please put them in the comments. Now, this is primarily for our camp students. So that includes things like, uh, hey, can you really quick show me how to thread the sewing machine? Or I have a question about my specific model machine or things like that. So feel free uh, to put anything in the comments. This is my first time live streaming with um, YouTube. So I'm hoping that everything goes a little bit smoother. Usually we do Facebook. Um, so bear with me here, okay? All right, so let's start off with what you should have for the project. So first of all, you want to have your instructions out. Um, that's very important. I'm going to try to run through in the order of instructions. I uh, have a tendency not to follow instructions. I know that's horrible for uh, a, a sewing teacher, but in his, the historical sense, it actually taught me a lot about how to fix mistakes. And luckily my grandma was, was there through it all. So now for tonight, we are gonna follow the instructions so that that doesn't happen to you guys. Um, so you want your instructions and then you're gonna have your material. So your materials, you're going to have a smaller piece like this. This is the um, piece that you're gonna to use to make the, um, oh, what are they called? The loops um, for your, your, your cording to go. And you're going to want your cording that we sent you. Um, and then you're going to want your fabric. So you should have four pieces of fabric, two for the lining and two for the outside. They should all be the same. Um, aside from that, you're going to want your sewing machine set up. So we have, um, I'm using white thread today. So we have it all threaded at the top. We also have a bobbin with matching color thread because we know that the bobbin shows up on the bottom side of the fabric that you're sewing and the top thread shows up on the top thread. So we want it to be the same color so it looks all pretty. Um, okay, let's see here. I'm gonna try, hopefully you guys don't get bumpy. Let me know in the comments if you do. Um, you're also going to want some scissors. Now, you're not gonna really need big scissors like 
do thread cutting scissors, uh, except for on one part of this project. So um, you might want to have like just a really sharp pair of scissors for that, but definitely a smaller pair of thread scissors is, is very helpful. You can use the bigger pair, but smaller helps you get closer to the fabric without cutting the fabric. Okay, you're also going to want your pins, or in this case, I'm going to use clips for you guys, um, just because I think they're a little bit easier to see when I'm videoing. Okay, uh, and I, you guys are being really bouncy over here, so I'm going to try to just move this away from the table over so slightly, so hopefully you won't be bouncing the entire time. Okay, so let's start off by looking through our instructions. We have an instructions booklet, okay? And on the first page in the booklet is something that looks like this. So every pattern has something similar to this. This is basically like your information about the pattern. So we have the materials included so you can make sure that you have all the correct materials. You have your main piece A, um, which is that big piece, and then your B piece um, loops, which is this smaller piece. Um, you have notions. You're going to have the two and three quarter yards of cording and then your matching thread. Why is it important to look at this? You wanna make sure you have all your pieces before you start. Um, so you can have everything laid out. And it's also important to understand what the pieces are called because in the instructions, any pattern maker is going to refer back to those pieces from what they call them in here. And sometimes the pattern maker will use a terminology of for a piece that doesn't make sense to you. So it's important to look in the beginning of your pattern to understand when that pattern maker's talking about main piece, they're talking about this big piece. When they mention the loops, they're talking about that, that smaller piece, okay? The other thing that you're gonna usually find in the front here is an overall seam allowance for the project. If you don't know what seam allowance is, basically it's the room the pattern maker gives you to sew. So if this piece of paper was my fabric, I have so much room from the edge of the fabric to place my stitch. And if I stay within that gap of space, then the project will turn out the correct size. It will turn out the size the pattern maker intended it for. If I go further inward, well, then the project's going to turn out smaller. If I go outward, you will probably have a bigger project and it won't look as nice. It's not going to make a big difference with what we are sewing. So this is a very forgiving project if you're a beginner. However, it does make a difference down the road. So it's something to get used to using. On this pattern, we have a half an inch seam allowance, okay? So that means a half an inch from the outer edge in is where you're going to sew. And your sewing machine actually has those markings. I'm gonna zoom in really quick so you guys can see, okay? Right down here, this guy here is called the throat plate. And on your throat plate, there are lines. Each of these lines indicate a seam allowance based off of the, the position of the needle when it's in its normal standard straight stitch position. Okay, so in my case, my needle, normal its normal position is to be right in the middle of the presser foot. And this first line here is actually three-eighths of an inch. The next line here is one half of an inch. So I know that if I keep the edge of my fabric right along this, this line, that my stitches will fall exactly at a half an inch. So it's there to be a guide for you guys, okay? All right. Let's see here. So now we're going to go to the first page and we're going to start with the basics of instructions. Okay. Um, let's see here. Right. Okay. So I'll just read through the instructions and I'm going to show you it. Okay. So uh, the first step is to place one of the A main piece main lining piece, I'm sorry, and one of the A main outside piece down next to each other with their short sides touching. That is all you're going to do right now. You're just going to take those two pieces and you're going to lay them down. All right, so I'm going to make some room for myself here. I'm going to set aside this because I don't need it. We're going to set aside my loop piece because I don't need it. Push these guys all to the side. Okay, so break it down you're gonna take one of the main lining pieces and one of the main outside pieces. So for my project, the white piece here, that's gonna be my lining piece, okay? And I'm gonna tip this down so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. And the outside piece is gonna be this funky, fun piece. All right, so it says to oh, lay them down next to each other on the short side. So you're gonna have a short and a longer side um, to your project 
Okay, you want the short sides to be connecting right there. And then make sure both are right side facing up. So if you don't know what right side is, um, every project has a right side and a wrong side, every piece of fabric. The right side is the pretty side. That's the side with all the details. The wrong side is that more muted side that doesn't look nice. Now, if you have one of our solid color projects, um, you can just pick a side. You don't need to really worry about which side is right or wrong side. But for if you have a design, you want your design face up, that means the right side is facing you, okay? When we sew things together, guys, usually when we get to the sewing, we're looking at the wrong side of the fabric. We're looking at it inside out. Uh, but we usually start off with the right sides together to make sure we're assembling the right side. Okay, so we have these together like this. Flip one towards the other so that the right sides are touching or facing each other. So I'm going to flip this guy right over on here. And I'm going to line up that edge. Like so, okay? Uh, so along the top short edge. And then you're going to repeat it with the other two pieces. So basically what we're doing here, and I'm just going to clip it along the top here, is we're connecting one lining piece to an outside piece along the short edge. So I have my clips in place. Okay. Make sure that's all lined up. And now I'm going to sew along the edge. So I'm going to bring my sewing machine forward again. Get you guys a little adjusted here. And when I first start to sew, I want most of my fabric to be on this side. Okay, we don't want to, as opposed to having it like this. That just makes it difficult for you to control your fabric. So we're going to put most of the fabric on here. I'm going to line it up to that line, the one half of an inch. And then I'm going to put my presser foot down. Um, now you, you might have like a latch here that lo lowers and raises it. You might have a button um, like mine does that lowers it. And then what we're going to do to start is we're going to start by locking our stitch. Now, every sewing machine is a little different. Um, there are a lot of sewing machines nowadays that automatically lock your stitch when you start to sew. Uh, that is what mine is. However, there is a, a very easy way to lock your stitch, um, and that is just to reverse stitch three times and forward stitch three times in any order you want. So in my case, I'll just show you really quick, even though mine's going to automatically lock it. So I'm going to go forward one two, three, and then I'm gonna back stitch. One, two, three. And you can see it's not exact, it's just close. What that does is it tangles the threads so that they, they are knotted. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew straight here. When I sew, I'm using my left hand to kind of keep this fabric up so it's not pulling against the fabric over here. It makes it harder to sew straight when you have this fabric kind of going like that. And I'm going to use my right hand to guide it left or right so that I can keep it on this line. I'm always looking at this line and where the edge of the fabric is. Okay, here we go. Now, when I get to a clip, I stop and I take it out before it hits the presser foot. If you're using pins, do not sew over the pins. That is not a safe way to sew. Uh, I actually have a pair of uh, safety goggles in here just for those purposes because I have had needles break off and fly in my eye because I sewed over a pin. So just be careful of that. And obviously you guys do not need to go as fast as I am. Um, I will, I am a bit of a fast sewer, <laughs> but I talk a lot. So you'll have a chance to catch up in between while I'm talking and this video will be posted afterwards. So you'll have a chance to go back and review it as well. Now I'm at the end, I'm about that far from the edge of my fabric. So I'm just gonna go a couple more, then I'm gonna back stitch one, two, I want two fast. One, two, three, and then I'm gonna go forward and I'm gonna sew right off the fabric. So now my needle's off the fabric. I lift up my presser foot, I can pull it out and I can cut my threads. Okay, and your project pieces should look something like this now. So they'll be connected at the center of this fabric. This is actually vintage fabric, it's super fun. All right, I'm gonna grab my other two pieces and sew those together quick along that short edge. And if you're not sure 
if you've got the short or the long edge, um, you could just kind of take this piece and match it up to make sure you are sewing the right edge. See, I'm matching them up here to make sure I'm sewing the right edge, which I am. So again, I've got my pieces laid down with the right sides facing each other. I've got my edge to sew, match up those pieces. And I'm gonna clip them. Okay, and then we're gonna sew that. I get a half inch seam allowance. And you see how my fabric's kind of leaning this way? I don't know if you guys can see. It's kind of like swooping this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up and move it over so that it is following straight along. You see how there's a straight edge there now? That's just going to help it so that the fabric isn't weighing uh, down this way and it's not trying to pull this line that way. It helps me keep a straighter line. <laughs> If you have a button on your sewing machine that looks like a pair of scissors, that is like an awesome, um, an awesome button. What it does is when you push that button, what's supposed to happen is the needle comes down and you actually have a thread cutter in your bobbin case that cuts the thread after it's locked the stitch, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now you should have two pieces that look like this. Let's go on to the next step. Lay the connected pieces flat from the center seam, measure one and a half inches on either side. Now, this is, sometimes I do find errors in my directions after the fact. This is one of them. You wanna lay it down right, uh, wrong side facing up. So I'm gonna lay that down, wrong side facing up, okay? Um, and let's see, it goes uh, from the center seam, measure one and a half inches. I have a handy ruler here, so I'm just gonna measure one and a half inches and put a pin in, okay? So one and a half inches this way and one and a half inches that way. Um, fold the extra edge inwards towards the wrong side of the fabric, press and if possible and stitch. So I'm just gonna fold this in and the extra edge is about a half an inch on your project. So I'm just gonna fold that in just like so and then I'm not gonna press it because obviously I'm doing this right in front of my machine, not near my iron, but we're gonna go ahead and stitch that. All right, and I'm just gonna start where I marked it. And I'm gonna start and go, again, my machine is automatically locking that stitch at the beginning and, and at the end of my stitch. And don't be worried if it isn't perfect, doesn't need to be perfect, but it should look something like that when you're done. Okay, so you should have it folded back and it should look like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other sides. Let's see here. One cool thing to, uh, or one thing to note is whichever way your seam allowance here is folded, try to fold it the same way on the other side. I'm just going to estimate this because I'm really good at estimating. So it should look something like this when you're done. And you're going to do the same thing with the other piece, which fell on the floor for me. Okay. So again, one and a half inches from the center. One and a half inches from the center. So locking my stitch in the beginning. And locking my stitch at the end. One more side. 
Now, as you go to, again, my machine trims all the threads for me, but when you have little threads like this, go ahead and just trim them as you go because it's going to make your project so much neater, so much neater. And again, if you have questions or if there's something you want me to show you a little bit more close up or go over one more time, go ahead and just leave me a comment. I hope they're showing up. <laughs> I haven't seen any yet. Um, again, when you go to lay this down to fold those pieces back, you want the wrong side facing up that was missing from the directions because sometimes I proofread and proofread and then simple proofreads and proofreads and then I still miss things. <laughs> but that's why I like having these lives so that I can uh, make sure everybody is up to date. And also while you're doing your projects, if it's in between these, you can feel free to reach out to us at sewingbyamber at gmail.com. We are happy to answer any questions. So I'm going to lock my stitch by going one, two, three, forward, one, two, three, backwards. And then I'm going to sew, oops, too far back. And then one, two, three, forward, one, two, three, backwards. Okay, trim away all of the extras. Okay, so now we have these two pieces. Oh, let's see here. We are on number three. We already repeated all the steps with both of the pieces. Now we can go to number four. Yay! So you should be on the bottom of this page, number four, we're looking at this picture. You're going to lay your piece B, which I, mine fell down, hold on. Okay. So lay piece B, folded piece, um, lay B, fold piece down with the wrong sides facing up. So this is a loop piece. You want to lay, lay it down with the wrong side facing up. Fold the long bottom edge one half an inch and press. Repeat with the top edge. So for the example here, since I can't use an iron, guys, I got a piece of waterproof canvas. It's a little bit thicker than what you're going to be using, but it is uh, really great because it creases. So let me just show you what they mean. Okay, so we're going to fold it up halfway, and I'm just going to crease it. There you have that. And then you fold it up again almost halfway crease it okay so it should look something like this okay and then let's flip to the next page and okay um, now, step number five, which is right here, now fold in half a long, long way and stitch along the open edge. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it up one more time, like so, so that it's like this. And then this open edge, you can pin it or clip it if you feel more comfortable doing that. Pins and clips are really there, guys, just to make sure your fabric doesn't move as you sew. And then we're going to sew along the edge. Um, we're going to sew along the edge here, okay? And we're going to lock our stitch. So one, two, three, forward. One, two, three, backwards. And we're just going to sew along the edge. Now, chances are in your kit, you have either one or two of these. If you have one, it should be long enough for both pieces, which means you'll be able to fold it in half and cut it. Uh, if you have two, you'll have to do this twice. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of flavor to my other side and do the same stitch on this side, even though I don't have to, because I just think it looks pretty. And again, if 
<laughs> if you're wondering why I did not lock my stitch, my machine does it automatically. So I have one long piece, so I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm just going to cut it down the middle. And now I have two loops. So there's one loop. So I fold that in half and trim all my threads. There's one of my loops. Pretty cool, right? And then here's my other one. But again, if you have two of these pieces in your kit, then make sure you, I think some of them we did want some one and some we did two, depending on the pattern theme that you chose. Um, but you should have enough either way to do the entire thing. Okay, so let's go back to our instructions and get these guys attached. So now we're on number six. Go back to your main pieces and lay down one set of fabrics lay one set of fabrics down with the right side facing up okay so let's start with that whenever you have long instructions guys break it apart do one small section at a time do not worry about reading the entire thing and then getting completely confused one section at a time is the way you want to handle those so i'm going to grab one of these pieces and i'll tip you down in just a second okay um let me see okay so we're going to lay these down. All right. So you can see I have it laid down with the right side facing up. Okay. Take one of your loops and fold it in half. So I'm taking one of my loops, folding it in half. Lay it one inch from the bottom corner of the outside piece. So this is my outside. The fold, folded edge should be on your fabric and the rough edges should hang off the edge of the fabric about a half an inch. So what does that mean? So here is the rough edge of my fabric. I'm going to go about an inch up. Let me just grab a clip. Okay. And I'm going to lay this down on it. Now you can see that I'm over the rough edge about a quarter of an inch. And then the reason we do that on patterns is because we want to make sure we get that entire loop sewn into the seam. Okay. If we don't do this, then there's a chance that if you go off of your seam allowance, like you go too close to the edge, that you're going to wind up having to seam rip and restitch this into everything because it will be, it, it will have come out. Okay. So we've got that pinned there. Folded edge should be, okay. Based stitch one quarter inch from the edge. Now, what a base stitch is, is a temporary stitch. So we don't have to worry about locking our stitch with it. In fact, you can even lengthen your stitch to like a number four length if you'd like. Basting is used for a few different things. Um, basting can be used to create a pleat in something, um, but we are using it here as a connection so that we don't have to worry about multiple, more than two pieces being pinned. So normally when you're assembling something, you have two pieces that are pinned together and you're sewing it. Right here, if we count this loop, we've got one, two, three, and then four, the other piece that we're gonna put on top. We don't wanna go through all four of those layers and just hope that nothing slides around. So what we do is we put a basting stitch on this loop to connect it in onto this piece so that it doesn't slide around. Um, the basting stitch, the reason that the instructions say a quarter of an inch is because you want it within your seam allowance. On this project, our seam allowance is a half an inch. For this type of basting stitch, you want it to be within that seam allowance so that at the end, when you're all done with your project, you don't see it from the outside. Now, if you've heard of basting before, you may be like, but I thought basting stitches go farther down. If you're using a basting stitch to create a pleat, it is a different type of basting, same kind of stitch, but it's a different use and so those do go in a different position but for what we're doing we want to stay close to the edge okay so i'm going to tip you guys back down and show you the stitch okay and again don't have to worry about locking your stitch okay let's see here So now we're going to do that on the same exact thing on the other side. So we want to go about, oh, where's my other loop? You know what? Things are falling all over the place today. There it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time something fell down, it'd be an amazing thing. Um, 
I just want to make sure to take a quick respite. Okay. And double check to make sure we're good to go with everything on that end. Okay. So now we're going the other side. Take it down a little bit more so you can see. So we want to go. So here's our one side. Okay, now we're going to slide over to the other side again, about an inch up. And we're good. And we want to go a quarter of an inch over the edge. So if you want to see what that looks like, there you go, about a quarter inch over the edge. And we're going to base that in. All right, we've got that step done. So now your project should look something like this. And believe it or not, we are almost done with this baby, which is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna tip you back up. Everyone doing okay? Doing great. Remember, if you have any questions, just email me, put a comment in. I'll be watching the comments all month long or if you're on Facebook, join our VIP group and put a question there. You're always welcome to message me that way. All right. Um, number seven. This is where we're at, okay? Um, lay other... So we have this... I think the last step I didn't finish reading. So you want to lay your piece down flat with the right sides facing up. I'm just going to do that quick. Um, lay other set of fabrics over the top with the lining sides matching <coughs> and outside fabrics matching, right sides facing, okay? So what that means is we're going to lay these on top of each other. We want the outside piece to be laid over the outside piece, the lining piece to be laid over the lining piece, and again, we want our right sides touching, Okay. Your folded edges should match up. So you can match those right up at the center and they should be the same or pretty close to the same width away from that center seam, okay? And what it says is leaving the, your folded edges open so along the outside piece, then do the same with the lining. And the picture should be pretty self-explanatory. You're basically sewing where you see the stitches. Um, but the way I like to do this when I'm making these kind of bags is I like to take my center seam, oops, a little thread there I can trim. See, this is why you trim your threads, guys. This is why you trim your threads. Okay, so I line up my center seam. So here's my center seam here, here's my center seam there, and see how I can just like line them up to a pretty line, and then I can flip it forward, and I put a clip there. The reason I like to do that, even though I'm not going to be sewing these areas, is I like to make sure that this area is lined up properly so that my bag looks really cute when I'm all done. And now I'm going to do the same for the other side. And then what I do is I work my way out from there. So in one direction or the other. So I go this way and I line up my edges. Okay, and I just go all the way down, pinning or clipping, whichever you are using. Make sure when you get to your loops there that you clip or pin on the loop. It just keeps it from wobbling left or right and makes it easier to sew. Okay, and we're gonna go along the other side and work our way down. I never worry if the bottom of the bag is a little bit longer or short on one or the other pieces. As long as it's within, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch, you're probably fine. If it's more than that, you want to go back and just double check your sewing. Um, chances are when you did the center seam, you didn't use the right seam allowance if those don't line up well. Uh, but if they're like a hair off, don't worry about it. Let's look at this. 
All right, so now we just have to clip the bottom. And you can see mine are pretty spot on because I use that proper seam allowance. All right, so I have the entire bottom clipped. I'm going to sew that first, and then we'll go back and clip the top. So I'm going to start not he not here where it's folded. I'm going to start right after it's folded and go down. And again, I'm using that uh, half-inch seam allowance. Slide this in. I'm going to start right there. So my presser foot down, go wait for my machine to lock. One, two, three, forward. One, two, three, backwards. And if you ever get, like, I have thread caught under my, my presser foot. So what you do to get that, you ever have issues like that? Put your needle down and lift your presser foot up and then you can fix it. You have a, a hand wheel here that if you turn it towards you, like rotating this way, allows you to raise and lower your needle without screwing up anything in here. So you can use that to put your needle in and then lift up your presser foot. Try not to lift up your presser foot mid project uh, without the needle in because it loosens up all your threads when you do it. And then your stitch gets funky and it can cause knots. All right, we're gonna go all the way down to the end here. Again, I'm stopping and adjusting my fabric, taking clips out. Now, a fun little trick for when you're going over your loops. Uh, when you first go onto anything thick, back stitch. Because when your presser foot goes up onto something that's a little bit thicker, sometimes it loosens up the threads. Like it pushes the, the presser foot up just enough to loosen up those threads. So by back stitching it, it almost like presses those threads back together that stitch tighter. So I'll show you what I mean. So we go forward. And I've just gotten onto that loop and I'm gonna back stitch. And a little bit more. Now when I go forward, I have a channel that was made by my stitch. I have a channel that was made by my stitch for it to go up on. Oops, this is hard when I do it one-handed. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to stop a seam allowance away from the edge. So I am half an inch away from the edge. I lift up my presser foot. And I, I'm sorry, I have my needle in. And then I lift up my presser foot and I turn the fabric. If you don't have your needle in, this will not work. But if you have your needle in, it'll work. And then you put your presser foot down and you can keep sewing. And that means you don't have to lock your stitch till you get up to the edge. So we're going to go through one more corner. Now, if it looks like I'm pushing my fabric, I am not. I am literally being using a very light touch, and I'm just following along with the fabric to make sure that all this weight isn't pulling my stitch left or right. Also, because I'm getting close to the edge here, I don't want to get my finger too close to that presser foot. All right, again, I'm stopping a seam allowance away, putting my needle in, lifting up the presser foot, turning and I'm going to be going over another loop. So I'm going to press her foot down. I'm going to go forward. I'm onto that loop. I'm going to back stitch. I'm off that loop. Now I'm going to go back over. I'm off the loop. I'm going to back stitch back on. So beginning and end of that loop, it's good to do that back stitch because it just makes it uh, a little bit more secure of a stitch. And now we're going to go, and I'm going to stop right before, right here where I have this pit, this, uh, well, it's not going to pit clip, right before I reach that pre-sewn part. So 
it should look all nice and neat like this together. You shouldn't see anything of your loops except for um, the end tabs of them. And you can go ahead and just double check both sides to make sure you stay on the fabric all the way around. And then we're gonna go ahead and clip and do the other side. So again, we're starting from the center. Okay. down here and then I'm going to switch over to the other side and I'm going to follow all the way down on that side clipping and then we're going to sew most of it and I say most of it because on this particular one we want to leave an opening on one of the sides to be able to flip this right side out okay Now, I don't know that we included that instruction in, in your, um, your instructions because you can actually flip this guy right side out using this opening right here, okay? Um, that allows you to flip it right side out. So actually, I've done this back a couple different ways. Put the corners in, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do it the way you guys have it in your instructions. So we're gonna sew it all the way around and then we're gonna invert it. Uh, we're going to invert it using that opening, okay? All right. One, two, three to start. One, two, three back. So to the corner. your foot up, turn the corner. Now, if you have a thicker fabric you're doing this with, you will have to leave an opening in one of the sides um, and then close it up later because it's not going to fit into this tiny opening. But with the fabrics we sent you with your kit, you should be fine with that. All right, press your foot down, continue to stitch. Stop a seam allowance away, needle in, press her up, foot up, turn the corner, press her foot down, adjust your fabric, keep sewing. And lock your stitch at the end. Now, before we turn this guy right side out, okay, uh, step eight, so we're at this part, uh, is to clip your corners first and then invert. So what that means is, let me get you to a side where you can see the stitch a little bit better. So you have your stitch that goes up to here. I don't know if you can see it at all in here, but you have your stitch up there. You wanna cut the excess fabric. It's like a triangle off of there. So it looks something like that instead of a point. Um, the reason you do that is so that when you turn it right side out, you have a nice crisp point to work with, okay? So now we're going to go through those openings that we made in the middle, this guy right here, and we're going to pull the lining or one side. You want to kind of scrunch it between your hands like so. I don't know why this is so high. Scrunch it between your hands like so till you get the back corner and pull that through first. It just makes it so much easier. So we're pulling through our lining first, okay? And then I'm gonna continue on slowly pushing from the wrong side of the fabric forward. So I have out my entire bag. Okay, we're almost done guys. Make sure once you're done with your project that you share it with us. You can email us a picture. You can tag us at Sewing by Amber. 
Um, you can post it in our VIP group. Okay, so it should look like this on the outside. And then we've got a lining here. So we're gonna push the lining in to the bag. Gosh, I love this fabric. My grandma used to use, this is actually from her stash that she left me. She used to use this fabric to make clothes for us when we were kids. Pretty sure we had several pairs of shorts in the 90s uh, from this fabric. Okay. So as I'm turning it right side out and I'm pushing the corners together, putting the lining in, the other thing I'm checking on is this top edge. What I wanna be doing is making sure that the top edge here is nice and even. So what I mean is you see how this is kind of up? We don't want that. We want that stitch, that seam to be right along the top. And if it's not staying, you can press it or you can grab a clip and just clip it in place until we complete the next step. You just want it to be in the right positioning there so that the rest of your bag lays properly. Okay. So I'm just gonna clip it in place. Okay, so we have it here. Let's look at the next step, which is number nine. And that is to top stitch one inch from the top of the bag. So what that means is one inch from the top, okay, which is what you should have left. Because remember we sewed one and a half inch from the center. So half of that is, half an inch of that is our seam allowance. The rest is one inch. This should be about one inch. So we want to go one inch down and you're going to just do a top stitch. And a top stitch is any stitch that you see in the final product that lays on the top of the fabric. Uh, you find it if you have a pair of jeans, look down the side seam. Most jeans, they put a top stitch along the side seam to reinforce that seam. Um, in this case, what we're doing is we're making a casing for our, sorry, I saw some threads. We're making a casing for our pull strings. Um, and so that is why we need that top stitch there. Because otherwise, if we just put the strings in here, they would just float down into our bag. We, we, we don't want that. So um, about an inch from the edge, if it is easier for you or you feel that you need to do this, you can grab a ruler and a pencil or a chalk a pencil and just draw a line. I am going to use the guides on my sewing machine to do this, okay? Because there is a guide on here for one inch. If you don't know which guide it is, grab a ruler, measure from your needle over to the guide to find the one inch guide. That way I know I just have to keep my fabric on that one inch edge and I'm golden, all right? Um, when you're doing this as well, you notice how, here, let me tip this down so you can see, you see how my fabric's kind of going over the arm this guy's called the arm. It's kind of going over the arm and sitting like that. Um, most machines allow you to take off this extra component, either in the back or the front, that gives you this thinner arm to with a space underneath. We call this the free arm. It's used a lot for like sleeves and stuff. So if you can find that and locate that, you can actually slide your fabric underneath and over, and that way you're sewing in one big circle. If you can't find that, what you're gonna be doing is instead of sewing on the outside of your bag, you're gonna be sewing on the inside and you're gonna set it on top like so. Same kind of principle, just a different way of doing it. So I'm gonna do the roundabout way because I think that between the two, it's probably a little more challenging. So that way you guys can see how you do that. Okay, so again, I am starting at, ooh, let's get you a little closer so you can see. All right, I am starting, here is my break, my opening. So I've got one inch down. So there's my guideline. The 30 is my one inch mark. Okay. And I'm starting right where I sewed that stitch before the fold over stitch. Okay. And I'm going to sew on from there. So put you back up here. Whoop. Sorry, that might be a little disorientating. Let's see if I can get you any closer here too. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay. So press your foot's down starting by locking your stitch. Again, my mine's gonna make a bunch of stitches because that's just how my machine is. All right, so three forward, three back, and then I'm keeping an eye on this line as I sew, all right? So I'm watching my edge of my fabric. 
And I like to use my right hand to kind of guide it and my left hand again to adjust fabric over here. When you're doing a top stitch too, feel free to make it like a three on the length. You don't have to do it um, so short as what you would normally sew. Now, do you see here? You see how this is happening here? Okay. You see how there's like a fold over here? That's being caused by the fabric over here is bunching. Okay. This is all bunching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to move it back. And you see how that nice, now it's nice and, and flat. It's not uh, as folded. Your fabric, especially when you're working with this amount of fabric, is going to work against you. You got to be in control of it. You got to be constantly adjusting it. Okay. And notice I'm taking my clips out as I go to. Now, as I go around the circle, you're going to notice here too, it starts to get a little tight. So, what I need to do is readjust. I'm going to pull out some from underneath and readjust it. And I'm just going to keep going around. Almost done. And then I'm going to lock my stitch going one, two, three backwards, at least. Again, it's not precise, but at least if you're at least doing three, you're locking your stitch. Um, and then lift up your presser foot pole and trim your threads. Okay, let's back you guys back up so I can see your smiling faces or you can see mine. All right, we're going to trim our threads away so it's nice and pretty. And now it's really starting to look like a bag. Look at that. Look at that, how cute. God, I love this pattern. I'm so really glad I made it with this one. Okay, we are on step 10. Guys, we're almost done. This is the threading part. Now, this can get a little confusing. Hopefully, the diagrams I gave you are okay and help a lot with that. Um, you were given a big old long string of cording, okay? So you want to take that cording, bring the rough ends together, and that way you're cutting it in half, okay? Because you need two separate pieces, okay? Um, depending on the kind of cording you have in your kits, again, because some people asked for specific colors and things like that, you might need to find a safety pin just to uh, thread this through. I'm going to use one because I am using a very fluffy cording compared to normal cording. Um, but what we're going to do is just pick one side, okay? And you're going to start with the piece that's facing you the most here. So let me just get a little closer here. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to push it through on this side. Okay. And if you've ever threaded anything, you know, it can be a little annoying, but if you use the a pin, you can kind of scrunch it onto the pin, then grab the end of the pin and pull the fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scrunch it onto the pin, grab the end of the pin, pull the fabric. Scrunch it onto the pin, grab the end of the pin, pull the fabric. Okay. And then you're going to come out the other side. Eventually here. <laughs> Okay, I'm out the other side. So I'm going to grab a whole bunch and, and pull it out. I don't want to grab all of it. I want to leave a little bit at the end. All right, now where I came out, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to come out the other way. So scrunch it on the pin, pull the fabric. Almost there. All right. Come on. Come out. I think you got stuck. Sometimes you'll get stuck on the miscellaneous fibers that are inside. So once you have this side pulled out, 
you can see it actually will start scrunching like it's supposed to. You wanna match up your end pieces, okay? And this is where we're gonna thread them through our loop. Now your loops will definitely be easier than my loop will be because mine was made out of waterproof canvas, which is very thick and ornery. Um, so I have to do this one at a time, but you're just gonna bring them both through the loop. Ooh, I should have put something on that. I don't have any tape. Ha. I know this is a weird thing to have in my sewing room, guys, but I have electrical tape in here. <laughs> because why not? Here's a handy hint uh, for the end of cording. If you're ever having problems where it's coming unraveled at the top and put a piece of tape on it. It doesn't have to be electrical tape. And that way it keeps it together. Okay. Push that guy through. Come on. Second one's always the more challenging and you want it to be challenging because then it will not come out as easily. All right. Once you have it through, you make a big old knot with both of those pieces together. This is gonna stop it from pulling back through and then you can trim off whatever you have extra, like so. Okay, now we have to do the same exact thing. We have to do it on this side. So that means I'm gonna grab my electrical tape again. Where'd my tape go? Cause I gotta tape off the end of this one. Weird things that you might need in your sewing room. Electrical tape, <laughs> um, uh, tweezers actually is something that I went years without in my sewing room. And now I'm just like, why? Because having a pair of tweezers helps you so much whether you're trying to get thread um, in a funky spot in here, uh, or if you are, um, you just try to get something in a weird space, if you're trying to pull um, fabric through a small opening, they just help, guys. They just help. Okay. So just so that you don't get tricked on this one, I'm going to show you. All right. So this is where it's coming out on this end. I'm going in through this side. So I'm going in through the opposite side. There is already a cord in, in there. But I'm going to push it through anyways. Okay. All right, and just like I did on the other side, I'm gonna bring it around and go back through the other side here. So each um, each side should have two pieces of cording going opposite directions, going through them. And if you're wondering why mine is so small, it's because I usually, when I make these kind of things, my kids steal them. <laughs> so I'm making it a little smaller so that they can uh, use it because they're going to steal it anyways. There's no chance that I'm going to get a chance to use it before they do. <laughs> okay, so I've got, so now I have it pulled through both sides and I can cinch it like that. I'm going to bring it through my other loop here at the bottom. Oh my gosh, guys, we're so close to being done. So close. Do, 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 pushing it through. Like I said, if it's not hard to put through, it's going to be easy to come out. So you want it to be a little bit challenging. So, all right, there's one. Grab my other one. So our next um, live is going to be next week. I'll bring up the date here in a second. Um, and that's gonna be the second project in our summer camp kit, which is a bucket hat. Uh, so we will be assembling that one. And the reason I'm going in this order, it in your kit, it should show you this as well, but it's just going easy to hard as far as projects. This first project is very forgiving make a mistake you're not going to notice it as much as you go through the projects they're going to become a little bit more noticeable as you make mistakes you're still going to have a beautiful project 
Um, but it helps to start with something a little bit easier and then move your way up. Okay. All right. There she is. Remember to share your backpacks, uh, sewingbyamber.com, sewingbyamber at gmail.com, our Facebook group, Sewing by Amber and Jean. Come check us out there. Uh, and then, yes, our next sewing live um, will be next week. I will post this uh, link to this video in the camp, um, in the lesson library. Uh, next one is Wednesday, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, this coming Wednesday, the 13th. So I will see you guys there with all your materials for your bucket hat project. Remember, you can always comment any questions or email us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this was fun. I'm glad we did this. I, like I said, this is the first time I've used YouTube to do live. Um, but until next time, bye-bye.